President Emmert here? He's in India. He is? Uh, do you know if there's uh, someone that uh, we're talking to as a secretary, perhaps? Not here. Um, Are you? You're here. Secretary? Can we talk to you? <laughs> sure. But you know, I think they might have gone to get um, Norm Markins, who's the. I'm nobody, trust me. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, That's not trying to do anything uh, bad. Well, uh, who is the? Uh, who is our uh, uh, director of um, ex uh, media relations? There he is. We Norm, have Norm's uh, the one you want to talk to, right? There. Uh, Mr. Arkins, we have a eulogy to read right. for you. Um, we want to read this to President Emmer, but unfortunately he's not in. You know where he goes, he's in India. That's what I hear. Uh, brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today in mourning for the death of BJ and B, a garment factory located in the Dominican Republic. BJ and B has long been a symbol within the anti-sweatshop movement, a concrete testament to the power of student and worker solidarity. In 2003, with strong support from students and other solidarity activists, the workers won their hard-fought hard struggle for union representation and higher wages, an unprecedented victory. Unfortunately, since the establishment of the union, brands like Nike and Adidas have been attempting to systematically erode these gains by decreasing factory orders rather than committing to workers' rights. On February 22nd, the majority of the workforce was laid off, and the factory announced its closure. This closure not only has severe negative repercussions for the workers in the community of Villa Altagracia, but for the entire union movement in the Dominican Republic and internationally. It is clear that licensees' decision to pull their orders from BJ&B is a direct result of the improvements that were made in the working conditions at the factory. Unfortunately, this is not an isolated case, but an increasing trend, a trend which has been a pivotal uh, concern to slap. As we have seen in the past several years and with increasing frequency over the past several months, more and more unionized factories are shutting down as brands make conscious decisions to shift productions uh, orders to lower cost facilities where workers' rights are not respected. The brand's decision to cut and run from BJ&B and other factories where workers have gained improvements in their working standards sends a clear message that complying with university codes of conduct and respecting workers' fundamental right to form a union will ultimately lead to a factory's closure and massive layoff of the workforce, a message the university community cannot tolerate. The past precedent has shown that university intervention can and does make a difference, so it is imperative that we all act now. But we must not also look towards a more sustainable long-term solution to this disturbing trend. The downward pressure on wages and working conditions caused by the brand's concerted decisions to shift production away from factories where workers have a voice in the job, where workers have a channel for exercising their rights, are precisely what the designated suppliers program seeks to address. By requiring that licensees source from factories where workers have the right to form a union and that they pay higher prices so that workers can ne negotiate living wages, universities can use their leverage constructively to ameliorate these downward price pressures and anti-union tendencies. New tenants of the collegiate apparel industry, thereby ensuring that BJ&B and other factories like it are not faced with closure, but instead are rewarded for their respect for workers' rights. The current situation at BJ&B serves as a wake-up call, a harsh reminder of imperative immediate implementation of the DSP is to protecting past victories that workers in the university community have worked hard to achieve, to ensuring that university logo goods are associated with the higher, highest label, labor standards in the industry not with systematic exploitation. Thus far, 30 colleges and universities across the country have adopted the DSP and have made a public statement to implementation of the program. We commend these institutions for taking this important step forward and continue to, to demand that UW follow suit. <coughs> a commitment to the fundamental principles of the DSP means more than signing on to a statement. It means a commitment to proactively pursuing implementation of the program and, in the meantime, doing everything in our power to ensure that the business practices of our licensees do not compromise these principles that factories such as BJ&B stay open. Members of the university community cannot allow the progress that was made at BJ&B to be undone. Universities concerned with workers' rights must take swift and decisive action to ensure that the rights of workers producing our apparel are protected, both in, in the Dominican Republic and around the world. Brothers and sisters, the story of BJ&B is a tragic one, and if the factory does indeed remain closed, there's nothing that the University of Washington can do to make up for these 350 Dominican workers who will uh, lose their jobs. What the UW can do, however, is make every possible effort to keep the factory open by having President Emmer contact brands like Nike, demanding that our school's, uh, school's code of conduct be enforced by reopening BJ&B. Additionally, the university can learn from the lesson of BJ&B and make real steps to, implementing the, uh, to eliminating the use of uh, sweatshop labor by signing on and implementing the DSP. If this were to happen, the tragedy and the possible closure of BJ&B might even have some long-term benefits. Uh, to President Emmer, uh, or Mr. Arkins, Please take action to avoid the possible uh, uh, permanent closure of BJ&B. In the words of Sebastian Garcia, BJ&B union member, I want to say to the brands like Nike, 
then they should do everything that they can to keep this factory open. In this moment, we the people of this community, we need this factory here. We should not be blamed and we should not be punished by the loss of our jobs because we tried to organize a union to protect ourselves. Thank okay, you very so much. Would, that's fine. Would you like me to convey that to President Emmer? You, have you sent a copy to him? Uh, we would, and we can okay. send a copy. And, and you all know that um, uh, a couple of things. One is you know that the Licensing Advisory Committee, which has not met for a couple of years, has been re-established and reappointed. And I know you came to the first meeting, although you're not the permanent. We are aware of that, yeah. and we're also okay. aware and that the university has said that uh, in response to a request to take action on BNJMB, that trademarks and licensing will conduct a review, uh, which no time limit was placed on, and they will send a report to the well, committee the, with no possible not just trademarks, like the, time this, in the future. This, this is, a, in my <coughs> opinion, as a member of the committee, this is a perfectly appropriate topic and, and subject for the committee to deal with. I mean, that's why we have the committee to, because none of these things are simple, as you know. And um, and so the committee's there to look at it, to determine what the best course for the university is, to try to determine, in fact, whether the action you want us to take will, in fact, have the desired outcome and effect. We I can talk about theoretical know. things as long as we want. Well, but the fact of the matter is that there are over it's not thousands of workers it's at thousands of factories who have uh, are treated inhumanely, and the university can do something about it, and has. Uh, uh, it's, it's, there's an urgent need okay. to do stop. You, do you want to hear what I have to say, or you want to interrupt me? Uh, well, that's what we have to say, and we would like you to convey that to the president. And thank you very much for your time. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the dialogue.